So at this point, I mean, again, I, I want to thank you also for being like one of the first people for me uh, going into this whole segment uh, and being, you know, I guess my guinea pig to some sort. And, uh, <laughs> That's cool. Uh, you know, and this point, I would like to take time to really make make you shine uh, with, you know, just really highlighting uh, with you in an interview. And again, as I told everybody, uh, this is Owen Astle's uh, award winning film director, photographer and visual activist. And uh, I would like to uh, just start off with uh, uh, what inspired you to get into filmmaking? Mm -hmm. So I started off as uh, an actor, actually. So like from a very young age, I was I was acting, I was I was performing, um, and I, yeah, and you know, I spent most of my childhood in like theatre clubs and drama clubs and that kind of stuff. Um, and then when I was kind of in my late teens, well, I started kind of in my mid teens, kind of starting to take a bit more of an interest in storytelling, I think, and kind of directing and taking more a bit more of a role in which you're actually creating something rather than just um performing something you know rather than just taking somebody else's words and then when i was a bit more in my later teens i um well initially to be honest it was kind of because like because acting is as you as you all know obviously it's such a difficult industry to get into that i i kind of had this thing of like well okay a lot of the parts that i want I'm not going to get, or a lot of the, the stories that I want to tell, I'm not going to get the opportunity to. So why don't I just try and make some of my own ones and, and, and act in them? So I was like, okay, well, you know, if I want to act in a film and I want it to be about this certain subject with this type, type of character, I'm never going to find one of those in a casting call. So I'll write it myself, you know? Yeah. And then I found that, that uh, so that's kind of how I got into filmmaking. Um, and then, and also from kind of, from acting on on sets of shorts and, and that kind of thing and really enjoying that atmosphere, really loving the kind of atmosphere you get on a film set. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I just found that I actually really enjoyed that and I kind of, and then over the next few years, I, um, I really just worked on building myself up as a filmmaker um, and moved away from acting and really into filmmaking and into directing. Um, and yeah, and that's kind of how, how I got there. Um, and then in terms of the, the activist side, the visual activist side. So it really, it started around homelessness, which is a lot of what my kind of my, my, my work focuses on. I think I always really was really interested in telling stories that had some sort of a social focus that had some sort of a, um, a, a message or had some sort of a way to raise awareness about a certain topic that was important to me. Um, and that's kind of something that I was trying to kind of, uh, sprinkle in, into my work but then really the the kind of the more um out and out activist side really came when i started to work on homelessness um and doing stuff that was a lot more i think publicly engaged um because film can be in such of its own kind of little bubble you know um and when i started to create content around homelessness that's when i really started to uh, make it a lot more kind of outward facing you know and, and be taking it to places that I suppose, you know, films don't traditionally go to so taking it to kind of, to, uh, to hostels, to shelters, um, and into these kind of social spaces. Um, that's, yeah, and that, that, again, that kind of just built up over, over the years. Yeah, and I actually kind of agree as far as like, you know, being an original, like a, a creator rather than just an, an element in somebody else's projects, like you get more mm. of that, that direction on where you want it to go. And mm. yeah, no, I mean, all power to that. And especially, I, I understand it's, it's, it's a tough journey. And, you know, sometimes oh, yeah. we have to put it in our own, our own hands, but that's usually where we're going to be able to get that across. Exactly. Um, exactly. And I, I really do admire like the ongoing work you do with the homelessness and, and, you. and your communities. And, and can you just tell a, a bit of the audience of like what inspired you to work on these projects, like uh, specifically like some insight and also like the journey you had in like creating them? Yes. Yeah, so in terms of uh, homelessness, kind of, so really initially, so again, it's kind of something that from a relatively young age, I was, uh, I cared about, you know, and that I really saw on my doorstep, you know, literally. And then over the years, you see, especially in the UK, and I think in the United States as well, you see just how much uh, homelessness increased visually, you know, literally on the, on the street, you can see um, very viscerally how much it increased. And it got to a point where I was thinking about creating something around that. And then um, I was 
basically talking to some people that I knew quite well that you know I, I would, would consider friends um, about it, and they started and they were just, were just coming out with these very um, vitriolic and uh, very just ignorant opinions about homelessness and about homeless people. Um, so you know stuff like um, you know, you, you, know you, you can't give them food because then they're always going to pester you for more uh, or you know I, I, I don't want to approach somebody um, in case they stab me or chase after me or something like that um, and and that really kind of shocked me into action um, hearing these opinions from people that were otherwise very intelligent and rather otherwise very good kind people um, and and because film is you know often referred to as the empathy machine you know it's it's a way to increase understanding and to create empathy for other human beings um i i was like okay well you know yeah let's let's fucking make a film about it um and so started out that and just did like my own research into the topic and just went out on like a day and um and just did some very brief interviews with some people that were on the street in in bristol um made that into a really short documentary which actually got a surprisingly good response and then from that um, worked on a much larger project called Sleeping Rough, which was took place over about two and a half years um, and was taking interviews with people that were experiencing homelessness all around the UK and putting that into a sort of constructed narrative where we got actors um, who also had experience of homelessness to kind of live out these narratives. Um, and so, yeah, um, and that's, and then, you know, I had kind of various offshoots of that in terms of little documentaries and organizing Homeless Action Week and stuff like that and, and bits and pieces. Um, and yeah, and then, you know, and then I've put a little bit, because I've kind of experienced homelessness in a very mild way as well, but in a way that when it was happening to me, I wasn't considering it homelessness because it wasn't like being out on the streets, you know, like, like is that kind of vision of it, you know, it was staying in hostels occasionally and, 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 and shelters and sofa surfing, that kind of thing. Um, so I think that kind of, even though I didn't realise it at the time, that kind of fed into my experience. Um, but yeah, and so that's kind of how I got into, into homelessness. Um, but, you know, like I said, there's kind of lots of different, different topics that, that I work on. Like at the moment, I'm doing a lot of work on the prison system and, um, and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and especially with that, I mean, I, you know, aside from like the, the state of being, you know, homeless or whatever, and as you were saying, like the definition of it is like it, mm. with people's perceptive uh, perception on it, it, it really doesn't always take account to the programs that are available for them. I mean, because it's mm -hmm. the disenfranchised are affected by so much more than what people can just see right there on the street. And because mm -hmm. that's something that you can easily turn off. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you, you know, mentioned it. The filmmaking as, as the empathy machine because that's that's the awareness that we are all trying to create in whatever we're doing and like you know I, I definitely commend you for for doing such work like that too and you know especially from as you you know lightly grazed upon having a slight bit of a, a of a of an experience yourself in that sense too as I'm sure uh, I'm, I'm happy that it, it's it's no longer a present issue but yeah I mean mm -hmm. you know unless you actually experience some element of that yourself, you, you can't always imagine. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's a weird one. It's like, and, and cause sometimes, especially now I think there's a lot of the work that I do is around, um, uh, talking about how important lived experience of an issue is when you're creating work around that issue. Because again, too often in the film industry and in the arts in general, narratives are created around certain experiences, whether it be homelessness, whether it be uh, the, you know, the, the black experience, whether it be about uh, the prison system, whether it be about refugees and immigrants. Um, too often, I think narratives are created around those experiences by people that don't have any proximity to those experiences. And that's not to say that, you you know, as a director or a writer or whatever, that you have to have gone through that experience yourself necessarily. But I think that it's really important to make sure that if you are embarking on that journey, you have to absolutely have to work with people that have had those experiences. Um, and if you do have any proximity to, yourself, to it yourself, then that's great. And again, that doesn't necessarily have to be you personally, but if you're somebody who your a member of your family has been affected by it, for example, you know, that's another example of real proximity to it. You know, I, you know, I know lots of people that are um, partners of people that have experienced homelessness and actually some of the, some of the strongest narratives come out of those people because what they've gone through, um, having their, their partner go through such a traumatic experience, um, that's really powerful in its own right. 
so yeah so you know i always think that when embarking on, on any kind of um narrative about about something that is so unique and so individual and also so socially um uh, connected then yeah it's really, really important to make sure that you're engaging with anybody that has had those experiences as much as possible absolutely and you know just to kind of like tack on to that i mean i'm sure that you know people that have really experienced it versus those who have not is like it's it's really important to really make a concrete thesis out of it is like those people that have actual experiences like theirs are obviously stronger because that has that personal touch um yeah, 100%. So, you know, do you ever find yourself starting a project with a vision or it's, is it mostly an inspiration that comes as you're filming? No, it's definitely, I think it starts from a, a spark of an idea um, that develops into a vision. Um, but what I would say is that for me, it's always been really important to be flexible about that and adaptable as you go on. I think, but again, particularly with, you know, if you're kind of, um an auteur and you're creating work that is um that does come from a very singular vision that is very much your own subjective experience i think that that's a little bit different mm -hmm. but because with the work that i do it's so socially engaged and, it, and it's participatory and it's collaborative and it and um and it involves working with people that have experienced certain certain issues um i think that it's really important to go into that process with an open mind um in terms of the, the narrative that you're telling um, and whilst usually I will go in with a certain thesis, like you say, you know, um, I think that allowing those other voices to to change that and to mould that as you go through the process is is really important. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean it, that that's what makes it very powerful because you are actually involved with it rather than just like letting these things be puppets to whatever yeah. thing that you want to say. And it's like this is actually having that connection with it. So, exactly yeah, yeah. And, I, and i think that you know allowing yourself to be proved wrong is actually yeah. kind of it's, it's it's underrated do you know what i mean i think it's in some ways i think it's so much more powerful to go into something and say like yeah i went into this project with this opinion and i came out with this wholly changed opinion um i think can be even even more powerful yeah absolutely man uh is there like a particular film and you know i might as well just put this as like mm. experience or even person that is carried on with you as in your journey as an artist mm. um that's, a, that's a, a really good question i think not one specifically you know I, i've really been molded by stuff that i watch at certain points if, if that makes sense um like so for example like i said at the moment i'm doing a lot of work on the prison system in the uk Mm -hmm. um and a film that really affected me was the documentary 13th by um Ava DuVernay which is incredible it's on Netflix incredible documentary um and also when she created when they see us later on incredible incredible um films that she's made uh, around the uh the prison system the and the criminal justice system in the United States um and that really inspired me because it was something that was kind of in my mind before a little bit as a social issue, but then that really in inspired me to work more on it uh, within film. And the problem is that I find that I think that whilst the situation around the criminal justice system in, in, the, in the United States is so clearly fucked up, and whilst there are clearly so many issues with it, I think that there's actually more awareness of it at the same time and i think that there's actually some really good content that comes out of the united states again you know ava duvernay being the prime example of somebody that's creating powerful work around um around the justice system and and the racism that's intrinsic in that um and there's so many filmmakers that are creating amazing work around that in the uk i don't think we have that as much you know i think that the, there's there's a tendency around issues like that around whether it's racism whether it's um the issues in the justice system or in the prison system there's a real tendency over here i think to look at the united states and think oh well that's terrible look at that over there they've got such a problem over there and not really to address the, the issues that's going on on our ground when actually there are so many issues that we're experiencing that are so very similar whether it's solitary confinement you know um uh, that even children are being placed into in in youth prisons in the uk um whether it's the racism that's intrinsic in that and, and how you know black people in the united in the, in the united kingdom 
are nine times more likely to be stopped and searched than a white guy, for example. Proportionally, this is a, was a, a statistic that actually really shocked me. Proportionally, uh, as a person of color in the United Kingdom, you're more likely to go to prison than you are in the United States, proportionally. Um, which is something that really shocked me, actually. Um, and again, I think that bleeds into our art as well and our culture and how I think feel like there's, although you do get various, uh, particularly around documentary bits of work and particularly um, on TV, I think that within film, we have, we, we have nowhere near the same level of content and good content that is coming out of the United States. Um, and I often feel that the content that we do have is much more sensationalized, you know, the, whenever I search for kind of, for, you know, because when I'm starting a project, I'll look, always look for books and films that have, that have been done on that subject in the past. So when I search for films about um, the UK prison system, for example, it'll always be something like my my 10 years in Felton prison and how I learned to survive the toughest prison, you know, um, or you or the UK's 10 toughest prison, dr you know, drug drugs fights and knives you know stuff like that like this, this these very kind of sensationalized and you know just what grabbers you have in, in exactly right. exactly those very kind of sensationalized narratives that i think can be quite damaging um and so yeah and, and so i kind of really take that as a challenge to be like okay well you know as a filmmaker you're taught to tell the story that you want but that you cannot find right so i'm like okay well if that those narratives aren't there and if i'm frustrated with what's there at the moment then I can kind of take it upon myself to um to try and fill that gap in a way and, and in essence you know that that would hopefully and ideally help change an industry you know in in probably let's say localized basis i mean obviously countrywide but like local localized basis but yeah i mean and that's also why a lot of us in, in this generation we're, we're always trying to create and make a new voice because you know, we're, we're the new blood. We're, we're trying to change the face of, of everything uh, one way or another. And especially a media that probably is not helping us as well. We might as well help that media mm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. And, you know, we're, I think we are at a really exciting point now in the film industry and in the arts where there are finally a lot of conversations happening around, you know, around um, making sure that all voices are represented, um, making sure that that bias, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, but I think it's really important to make sure that that's not done in a way that's kind of tokenistic. And like I say, you know, filmmakers or artists of privilege that that haven't had certain experiences creating narratives around those experiences that they're so distant from. Um, I think that it's really important to make sure that we're challenging that. That is a, that is a fucking sick cup. I love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <see> that. <laughs> I think no, I, I love it in the I love it in the holder as well. You've got it in the, in the bowl. I love that. This was a car uh, a car cup holder that just broke off, and I was like, you know what? I really like the pig too much. I love it. I thought it was a bong <laughs> for a second, but <laughs> I love it. Um, what was it? Yeah, I, I think it's really important to make sure that as we kind of continue on, on that journey of thinking about the stories that we're telling and the voices that we're promoting in in the arts, making sure that. Um, that, that those voices and those experiences are actually the authors of their own experience rather than just being the kind of the objects, you know, of attention. Absolutely, man. So, you know, I got to ask, uh, what projects do you have coming up? Mm, cool. So I, um, we're, uh, about to release a film called to my younger self, which is a short film I made, uh, for the BBC about, um, uh, about solitary confinement of young people uh, in the UK. So that is at the moment just in its final stages of post basically. Um, and then we're going to start uh, distributing that to film festivals um, and taking that to, uh, and that'll be released on the BBC at some point. We're not sure when yet they kind of notify us of that a bit in advance, but yeah. Um, I'm currently working on a, a short script as well called Rise, which is um, a, a script I'm doing for the BFI, which is kind of one of the UK's big funding networks. Um, and that's about two young brothers who are homeless and in temporary accommodation. And it's just kind of the, this conversation between the older brother and the younger brother um, as the older brother kind of tries to um, create this protective environment for his younger brother and explain to him uh, kind of what's going on in their world without, um, you know, with, you know, in, in the way that you do with, uh, with a younger, younger brother and kind of trying to right. break, 
Place sure, it within that protect, protected bubble. in a sense, right? Yeah. Exactly. As exactly. Wonderful older brothers, I can tell you, my brother probably would do the same thing for me too. But yeah. Exactly. There you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and uh, soon I'm going to be starting a project um, which is basically um, going to be creating um, content with prisoners across London um, about their own their own experience. Um, so it's going to be a, a film hub that's set up in a in a prison in London, um, and yeah, we're going to be starting on a, a two year project um, through which prisoners kind of going to. Um, learn skills in filmmaking and storytelling and um and basically be empowered to to create work around their own their own experiences and their own stories basically wow so you know i'm very uh very excited about that you got a lot of work cut out for you right now man <laughs> oh man tell me about it tell me about it it's non-stop <laughs> so um since pretty much coming to the end i i would like to you know lastly i mean do you have a message that you'd like to give out to the viewers of this channel and you know might as well also tag along you know any information that you can probably tell them to uh check out your material uh, a mm. lot of uh, stuff that you've worked on and you know where they can get updates on where uh your upcoming projects will be at. 100%. Yeah, so you can check me out on most social channels. I mainly use Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and my handle is at Owen Astles. Uh, so that's O W A I N A S T L E S. Um, so you can check out, and that's where I kind of generally post updates about my stuff. Um, or you can check out some more of my work on my website, which is www.owenastles.com. Uh, so feel free to check that out um, or I'm, I'm on Vimeo as well. Again, just Owen Astles, O-W-A-I-N-A-S-T-L-E-S. Um, and yeah, as a, as a final message, I think um, it depends who, you know, who you are and what you're trying to do and what impact you're trying to have on the world. But I think, um, you know, the first thing is that it takes a long time to start um, and don't let that stop you. I think that starting is the definitely the, the hardest thing and just making sure that you battle through that and keep keep going um is is that is the hardest thing but once you get through that it's it's really amazing and it's really rewarding and it's incredible space to be in um and as much as you can great work in collaboration i think don't be don't be a lone voice um try and connect with other people whoever they are um whether they're you know whether they're a, a particular community whether they're just other creatives make sure that you collaborate um, as much as possible because I think that that creates a much stronger voice uh, so yeah absolutely you know man and if anything like I said you give the feels to me right here <laughs> oh, wait, thank you man yeah. oh, bro, stop it <laughs> I, I appreciate it I appreciate you being on this channel and again like as far as uh, those uh, links that you mentioned I'm gonna see about having that in the description below I also tried pointing out we'll see if I get to put in the, uh, the link for anything that you have available um, again Everybody, feel free to check out, you know, my friend Owen. He's just an amazing person that you've seen. Amazing creative, uh, great activist, and just, you know, a, a great person all together. Uh, I thank you all for checking this out, and hopefully I'm going to have more content coming soon. I'm going to try making anything as regular as possible. Um, and if you are creative yourself, please reach out to me. Uh, please uh, feel free to put your comments down below. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe. I would really appreciate it as I'm continuing and starting to be more of a content creator. And again, also in your comments, if you have any suggestions for uh, what to call this type of segment, right now it's words of exchange, but it could very well change to something that sounds a little bit better and more appropriate. And again, thank you so much, Wayne. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, my bro. Everybody, have a wonderful day and definitely stay safe. And you know what? Keep on writing. All right. See you all. Have a good one. Cheers.